Next, we're gonna talk about Apache Zeppelin. And sometimes the technologies we talk about kind of defy categorization. Zeppelin isn't a piece of infrastructure that's always running in the background on your cluster like some of the other things we've talked about in this section, but it is a tool that spans many different technologies on your cluster. So even though Zeppelin is primarily used as a quick way to experiment with your Apache Spark scripts and visualize your big data and slice it in different ways, it also has plugins for many other components on your Hadoop cluster like HBase or Cassandra or uh, HDFS and PIG and things like that. So as something that kind of sits on top of the broader spectrum of technologies on your stack, we're gonna justify putting Zeppelin in this section where we talk about things that are more broad in their scope. What is Zeppelin anyway? Well, it's gonna make a lot more sense when you just see it in action, quite honestly. It's kind of hard to explain until you see it. So we're just really gonna quickly talk about it at a high level and then we'll just dive right in and start writing a notebook in Zeppelin and we'll see then just how powerful of a tool Zeppelin can be for making it easy to experiment with your data and visualize it in an interactive manner. So it's really a tool for doing data science on your cluster easily. Let's take a look. So let's discuss Zeppelin. It is a notebook interface to your big data. What does that mean? Well, if you've ever seen an IPython notebook, it's the same idea as that. And if you haven't seen an IPython notebook and you don't know what I'm talking about, well, you kind of just have to see it to understand it. And don't worry, we're just going to talk about this for a couple of minutes before we just dive in and play with it. So it's going to make a lot more sense when you just see it and see what it can do. But at a high level, what Zeppelin does is it lets you interactively run scripts and code against your data. So instead of writing a big monolithic script offline and then running it off on your cluster, you know, it just speeds up the development cycle. It lets you experiment more easily with different code and different scripts that process and analyze your data. And it lets you also interle interleave nicely little formatted notes and things that make your code look a little bit more pretty. You know, you can make, you can put in information about what you're doing and why you're doing it and some text-based notes about why that just are, are more easier to read and better formatted than say a comment in your code. It also lets you share these notebooks with other people on your cluster so you can collaborate more easily and actually perform research more collaboratively and you know share your results with people more easily. So the main thing about Zeppelin is that it has very tight integration with Apache Spark. And this is where it really shines, because if you remember back to our Spark lectures, it was a little bit clunky. We actually had this big script that we developed offline on our desktop, and then we uploaded it to our cluster through S3 or something. And then we just ran it using the Spark submit command. So you can imagine iterating on that is kind of a pain in the butt. And when you're trying to analyze your data and play with it, you want the ability to be able to experiment very easily and try different slices of your data and try to analyze it in different ways very quickly and with, without a whole lot of hassle. Once you introduce that sort of friction, it becomes much more difficult to actually extract meaning from your data and you just might give up more easily, right? So the idea behind Zeppelin is to make it very easy and trivial to analyze your big data in different ways using Spark or other tools and visualize the results. So it starts to make your Hadoop cluster feel more like a data science tool. You know, you can actually interactively run queries and visualize them pretty much at the same time. Another cool thing about the Spark integration with Zeppelin is that it's integrated with Spark SQL. So you can actually just execute SQL queries directly against Spark SQL, just like it were a SQL database. And that makes things even easier. So kind of a theme that we keep coming back to in this course are different ways of actually treating your data like a SQL database, isn't it? It seems like there's about 20 different ways of doing that. And well, there are, <laughs> quite honestly. So there's more to Zeppelin than just Spark integration, though it has this pluggable system for what it calls interpreters, Spark being just one of them. So there are other interpreters that come with Zeppelin, and here's a list of some of them so far. So you can see you can talk to some familiar faces like Cassandra databases and Hive and HBase databases, or you can just talk to HDFS. It also has a Python backend, so it can really be like an IPython notebook for real. There's an R front end for those of you who are familiar with that from the data science world. And just to give you a sense of how massive the Hadoop e ecosystem really is, even though we've talked about a massive number of different technologies so far, you can see there's still a lot of names on here that we haven't even covered yet. So it's a little bit sobering. It's just a massive world out there. There's also a pluggable architecture for visualization plugins. So when you're trying to visualize your data, you can actually add in different packages for that as well. So Zeppelin is very extensible and very easy for people to add their own interpreters for different backends of data. So like I said before, it's gonna make a lot more sense if we just play with it and you see it in action. So fortunately, Zeppelin comes pre-installed on Hortonworks data platform. So on our little sandbox that we already have installed, we can just start using it. So let's just jump in and fiddle around 
with a Zeppelin notebook.